What is going on you guys? Welcome back to another video. Thanks for watching. Uh, as you can see by today's title, this video is going to be about taking my 750 horsepower BMW 135i to the drag strip. Uh, but before we dive in, I want to share with you guys some adjustments I made to the car before actually heading over to the strip. <laughs> So as you can see here, I've got a pile of parts. Um, a few things I wanted to adjust for the car were the suspension. Uh, I have some blown original stock shocks uh, that were still on the car, about 120,000 miles. I replaced them with this three-way adjustable drag racing shock. Uh, this actually was meant for a 60s Ford vehicle. But there are two other guys with 135s that have used these. So uh, I thought I'd give them a shot. They did. Fit. However, uh, they don't fit perfectly. So if you're looking for a drop-in replacement, uh, I don't know if I would necessarily consider these that, but I think they will work. So I'm gonna give them a shot today. Um, these were nasty, so I'm glad I got them out of there. And I also removed these Eibach Pro Kit lowering springs that I had in the car. Uh, these were a little bit lower than stock and the the springs were a lot firmer, so given that this car is a manual stick shift car, I wanted something a little bit softer. So I threw the stock springs back in, which I think will be the best for the launch. Uh, as you guys can see, the rear of the car did get raised up a little bit. So I've got some wheel gap again, but that's okay. Um, this car is pretty functional. Um, and I've got the 275, 40, 17, Mickey Thompson ET Street R's. These have been great so far. Uh, ideally, I'd have a bias ply tire given that it's a manual, but this radial should do. Um, I know if I wanna knock a few tenths off yet, I still can get a bias ply tire, but they don't make any in a 17 that will fit on this car, so I have to do the 15 inch brake conversion before getting a bias ply slick. Um, but anyways, uh, I do also, I did replace the spark plugs, these are the plugs that were in there. Um, I can't remember how many miles, but probably about five or 6,000 miles on 750 horsepower. They looked great. Um, some were a little bit more white than others, but otherwise they were pretty good. I just wanted to change them um, just as kind of preventative maintenance. So I'll store these away. I put the two-step colder NGK plugs in there and they've been great so far. The last update, and probably the coolest one, is this device right here. Um, some of you probably have never seen or heard of this thing, uh, but it's basically a electric controlled solenoid. So there's two wires here, um, and then this is a, a, an adjustable valve, this screw, and it goes in line between your clutch slave and your clutch master cylinder. It's actually a clutch launching device. So I've got two braided lines that run up here. I spliced in between the uh, factory slave cylinder metal hard line down below. Um, and this wire I've wired through to the cabin. I'll show you guys. So I brought this wire into the cabin from the solenoid up in the engine bay. And you can hear once I click this, it activates. So you're supposed to use this during a launch. So ideally I'd be holding the wheel and pressing this button um, for the first gear launch. And what it does is right now it is not activated. I'm not pressing the button. Uh, I can put the clutch in and it comes right back out. Put the clutch in, comes right back out. And now once I hold this button, push the clutch in, slowly slips out. Push the clutch in, slowly slips out. And that only happens when I'm pushing this button. So I wanted to do this to help avoid breaking axles and so I can consistently slip the clutch out of the hole. Um, this should do exactly that and then I can turn the adjustment knob up in the engine bay here. This knob just twists to uh, modulate how fast the clutch pedal comes in and out. So I can put it super tight so it springs right back out or I can loosen it up so it takes up to like three seconds to slip out of the hole there, only when the button's pressed. Uh, that's why it's electronic, so then the rest of the gears, it won't slip. Um, 
on the first to second, second to third, etc. It will only happen when I'm pressing the button on the launch. Some other things I did uh, were get rid of the back seat and trunk paneling. As you can see, I've got no more back seats. I do still have the rear door cards in, um, but I took out all the paneling in the back seats. If I had a guess, it might have saved me 100 pounds if I'm lucky, um, but I did want to kind of remove some weight from the car. And I also uh, wired in and implemented the JB4 anti-lag and two-step. So I'll have to show you guys that, um, but that should help me launch. For those of you who've been following the channel for a while, you probably know the build already, but if you're new to the channel, it's a Dock Race single turbo kit with a Precision 6266. I've got a Dock Race intake manifold, full bolt-ons, which includes the VRSF 7.5 inch intercooler. I've got a custom 3 inch exhaust going all the way back. I'm running the JB4 with a MHD back end flash. Precision Raceworks ignition coils, Precision Raceworks fuel pumps, um, which is a stage three dual Walbro 450 for uh, E85. I've got port injection underneath the Dock Race intake manifold here, and uh, I run about 28 pounds of boost on this. It put down 752 wheel horsepower on 30 pounds and 691 torque. The car is a blast to drive, but if you guys know these things, you probably know that they suck at drag racing, not only the 135, but the 335 as well. Even with power, like I've got, they just suck at drag racing. Um, they're not set up for it, they don't do well, especially with a manual, which this car is a manual, I've got an RTD shifter, but if you've got a manual N54, um, they're, just, they're just not good at drag racing. Um, my goal today is to run a 10 second pass. There are only two cars in the 10s that I know of, um, and that's Shiv in a 335 running a 1080 and Larry in his 335 running a 1075. Um, to my knowledge, those are the only two N54 powered vehicles in the 10s. I'm still running a stock motor, a stock transmission, a stock rear diff and stock axles. So we're gonna see how far I can get. Um, but I'm confident this thing can run quick and without really talking your ear off anymore, let's just dive into the drag racing. All right, so I did not record any in-car GoPro footage, but I do have a ton of clips that my girlfriend recorded of me going down the strip from the outside. So that's what you guys are gonna see in this video. I'm kicking myself for not recording, but I was caught up in the moment. Um, I was having a lot of fun with my friends. I was trying to focus on my car and getting the launch down, and filming was just kind of something I wanted to do, but just didn't get done. I'm, I'm not a professional YouTuber, uh, so, I'm working with what I got, but I want to talk you guys through each pass. So uh, I've got the slips in front of me here, and I'm gonna go over what happened on every single one. Also, I have to note, I was not trying to race against other cars, I was purely focusing on my lane and my launch. So you'll see my reaction time is all over the place. The, the tree might come down, and I might sit there for a minute on the green light. Um, that Your reaction time does not affect your ET. You can sit there for 20 minutes and then go, your, your, your time's gonna be the same on the slip. The clock does not start until your wheels start moving. So I just wanna make that clear for you guys. I'm, I'm literally just racing against myself here, trying to get a good slip. On this first pass, I was, you know, really learning the car. I had first time using the two-step, first time using that auto clutch slipping device, and I quickly found out that the two-step was not working as I intended. I had it set to about 5,500 RPMs. It would rev up, build boost, and hit that 5,500, and then immediately drop down to like 2,500, 3,000, and I would try using that launch slip device to slip the clutch, and it just had too low of an RPM, it bogged the launch, the clutch slipped too fast, um, and just, I, I couldn't get out of the hole. So that was not a good pass. I ran a 12.8 at 123 miles an hour, and even in between the shifts, I was noticing I wasn't able to just bang the gear. I, I could tell something was up. Um, so with that said, I, I kind of learned the car on that first pass and went back for another. <laughs>
On this pass, I uh, decided to ditch the two-step because I found out the first go-around that it wasn't working right. Um, so I decided to just free rev the car, it wouldn't build boost, but I would still use that clutch slipping device to try and get out of the hole. Uh, so you'll see I, I revved it up, used the clutch slipping device and it bogged again. Uh, it just wasn't slipping the clutch enough, I needed more slip. And I tried dialing it in with that adjustment knob and just wouldn't get me where I was trying to go. Uh, so again, that pass wasn't that great. A 2560 foot, which is horrendous and uh, 12 2 at 130 miles an hour. So definite room for improvement. Again, learning the car, going back for another pass. Now for this pass, I decided, again, no more two-step, but I needed a limiter. So me being that guy, I decided, oh, my factory rev limiter it will work fine. Let's do a seven grand uh, a launch. So I revved her up to 7,000 RPMs, and uh, this time I tried slipping the clutch manually. I, I didn't use the push button switch on my launch thing. I slipped it nice and slow, and I ended up burning through the tires in first gear. I quick put it in second and uh, it just shot the RPMs way down because of the, of the tire spin in first gear and bogged that one to two shift. Uh, I, again, I could tell I wasn't able to bang gears as I should. So what I found out was even though I wasn't pressing that button with the dial set to slip the clutch longer, it was still affecting my in gear shifts even though I wasn't pressing the button. That, that stupid launch control device that I thought would work good was actually interfering during the following shifts after the launch. So what I did was I turned the dial all the way fast so that um, it was as quick of a clutch slip as you could possibly make it go. Um, and what that did was it put it back to stock. It basically took that launch device out of the equation. I decided I'm not using it the rest of the day. I don't want it to be affecting my um, shifts past the launch, so uh, turn that thing off and forgot about it at this point. So now with the clutch slipping device out of the equation, I wanted to try to get the two-step to work again. Um, before it was falling too fast, so what I did was I raised the RPM of the two-step to 6500, hoping that it would then fall down to like 4500 and I'd still be able to launch. Uh, I really wanted the opportunity to have that limiter while it built boost so I could leave the hole with boost. Um, with this single turbo setup, um, it's really kind of gutless down low if you're not leaving on boost. So I, I, like I said, I turned that two step up and gave her my best shot, manually slipping the clutch myself, but I just, I wasn't able to get out of the hole good. It still was inconsistent. It kind of bogged the launch and um, overall it just, it wasn't great. I still ran, I think it was 11.9 at 131, but um, what I tried doing with that two-step still didn't work. So at this point, my 
plus slipping device and my two-step are now out of the equation. I can't get them to work the way I want them to, so I'm just going to move forward without using either of those things. <laughs> Now without the two-step, again, I'm reverting back to my, my old thought of trying to use that 7,000 RPM rev limiter. So I rev this puppy up to 7,000 RPMs and manually slip the clutch myself this time instead of bogging it. Uh, and she, she scooted out the hole pretty good, so good that she burned the tires off. It started spinning really bad and uh, at that point I just shifted it into second and again it kind of bogged because I was burning through the tires too much. But uh, I still was able to clock an 11.4 pass. My 60 foot was a 2.0 flat. So it was 11.4 at 134. Um, not a terrible pass, but I knew if I could get it to hook, that I'd be good the rest of the way. I was able to bang those gears. It was holding boost between the shifts fairly good. Um, I just needed to mess with that launch because I'm, I'm free revving it and I think 7,000 RPM was just too much. It was just blowing the tires off. So I tried dropping the RPM on the following launches. So as you can see on this launch, I've lowered the RPM a little bit, tried leaving the hole again, but it just, it burned through the tires and I went to put it in second and it kind of bogged again, so I, I didn't make a full pass. It was still too much RPM for the, uh, the prep. It, it couldn't handle it and it just was boiling through the tire. Since the car wasn't hooking up on those high RPM free revving launches, I decided I needed to just keep lowering the RPM. So what I did was this time, revved her up to about 5,500, let it hover there and slowly slipped the clutch. I mean, I was really slipping the clutch on this. Softly got out of the hole and it hooked all throughout first gear. So I was feeling great about this pass, 
crammed it in second gear, still hooking, crammed it in third, and I knew as long as I didn't miss any gears, this felt like the pass. It was like a rocket ship, honestly. I, I, was, I was blown away, because once I hooked out of the hole, I knew it was a good one. And as you guys can see, by the end of the pass, I ran my 1090. I hope you can see that on the camera there, a 1090. Um, so I did a 184 60 foot. I went 7.26 seconds to the eighth mile, 102 miles an hour in the eighth mile, and then a final ET on the quarter mile of a 1090 with almost 137 miles an hour. Uh, unfortunately, the track was closing right after I made this pass, so I couldn't make another one. I felt like I was finally getting a hold of the car. I, I learned how to launch it. I eliminated all the, you know, the crap that wasn't working. I started banging the gears. I felt really good about this pass, and I think I could still knock it down yet, but I was, I was thrilled to do a 10 second pass. That was my goal, so um, I'm hoping to go back again. I want to go back again and chop this down even further. I started off running, you know, 12 second passes, then 11 second passes, then low 11s, and then I finally chopped down to this high 10 second pass, and I'm happy with it. So um, I'd love to hear you guys' comments. Please drop a comment down below. If you haven't already liked this video, please give me that thumbs up. I would really appreciate if you guys just hit that like button because it'll have this video show up on the news feed for other people who like these cars. Um, and also be sure to subscribe. I got tons of content coming soon. As always, weekly uploads. I've got the 135, I've got the 335, and I'm looking to grow the channel. So I appreciate you guys' support. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments. So until the next video, I will see you guys next time. Peace.